क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट एंड बेंचमार्किंग प्रेजेंट्स संवाद क्यू एम बी कॉन्वर्सेशन ऑन क्वालिटी एट सिम्बाइसिस इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो सिम्बाइसिस आई एम देव सान्याल एंड आई ब्रिंग यू द सेकेंड सीजन ऑफ संवाद क्यू एम बी कॉन्वर्सेशन इन क्वालिटी एन इनिशिएटिव बाई द क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट एंड बेंच मार्किंग हियर एट सिम्बाइसिस इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी एट पुणे In the first season of Samvad, um, we had focused on quality enhancement and sustenance at SIU through the lens of NAC criteria. So we had brought you a series of discussions on um, teaching, uh, student support, research, and more. And we are pleasantly, pleasantly surprised to receive an overwhelming support and positive responses from across. the university now we bring you the second season and it comes at an important time as well see india's higher education institute or heis uh, find themselves at a moment of rapid change the national education policy 2020 uh, is always is already almost 4 years old and therefore there's much that is new in terms of regulatory frameworks pedagogical and research approaches and most crucially the introduction of disruptive tech like generative ai in our classrooms but if we are to get a comprehensive sense of siu's evolution in this moment of macro changes there's a lot that demands a new series of dialogue a new series of samvad in season 2 samvad qmb looks at quality not as a goal but as a journey and this means that our basket of topics is now much more diversified we are looking at uh, siu's renewed focus on uh, emotional well-being on internationalization on research and more and personally i could not think of a better person to get us started on this new journey than dr ramakrishnan raman the vice chancellor of symbiosis international university an accomplished academician and seasoned professional dr raman's educational journey started with bachelor's degree in computer science and engineering he then went on to finish his mba in systems and marketing and a doctoral degree in management from the pune university he has been with symbiosis for over a decade in different capacities including professor and director at symbiosis center for information technology professor and director at symbiosis institute of business management dean at faculty of management and the director of strategy development dr raman's contributions extend beyond the classroom and he has been instrumental in fostering international collaborations with universities in Japan, Canada, United Kingdom and the United States and his prolific research in information systems, IT strategy, entrepreneurship, AI, big data has earned him recognition with international academia. Dr. Raman, welcome to Samvad QMB. Thank you. So first of all a big congratulations on a new role how has the transition been so far and i'm sort of presuming here that the new role brings in a few new perspectives on on uh, familiar territory yeah it has been a new role for me uh, taken charge as vice chancellor about 4 5 months back I was in charge of an institution which is a flagship institution of symbiosis i uh, also was the dean of the faculty of management the largest faculty of the university have been uh, taking a lot of initiatives as a dean and as well as uh, the director of strategy and development at symbiosis uh, so i was very much aware of several strategic initiatives of the university officially took charge of the vice chancellor now uh, the responsibilities go much higher in terms of uh, the strategic direction for the university and dealing with people uh, of all faculty dealing with all deans of different faculty initially it was only faculty of management the directors of faculty of management but now uh, i'll have to go and interact with the faculty of engineering media communication uh, 
Faculty of Humanities. So it is about going and having the discussions with uh, the leaders of these faculty and of course the directors of these institutions under these faculty as well. So from that perspective, it is a new role. Otherwise, um, several of these aspects as director strategy and development I was anyway handling. So that way, it has been a learning uh, uh, a phase for me for the past three, four months. But um, I think uh, it's been a great journey so far and I expect that it's going to be much better in the future days to come as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, all the best with the journey, sir. And we are, of course, looking forward to it. But something that is very interesting to me, uh, I remember the very first email, one of the first emails that you sent out while starting on this new journey, as you said, uh, as you mentioned, is you mentioned four focus areas in that email. Uh, one is improving our academic delivery methods, uh, improving our global rankings, um, harnessing cutting edge technologies, and enhancing support for faculty research, right? While all of these are essential, of course, to SIU's growth and evolution, which one would you say, which one of these four would you say um, requires a more urgent and um, immediate focus? Or do you think, is there one which uh, becomes like the linchpin for the rest of the three? See, if you ask which is the most important, there is nothing like ranking order of one, two, three, four, as you mentioned. All of them are really important. Right. If you look at technology that has become a horizontal today, which is getting actually integrated with all aspects of students' teaching, learning process, administrative process, research as an agenda for the university now. So ensuring that it is uh, the technology which enables things to move faster, enables faculty members to give better output in terms of uh, the teaching learning processes, helps students to go and learn better. So according to me, tech has got a great role to play in ensuring that uh, the university actually becomes better. Having said that, you also have research as one of the prime agendas you mentioned in that email that I have told. So research is an agenda because if you do not look at research and bringing real research that you do into the classroom, otherwise students easily find many things today. They go and ask a chat GPT or a generative AI engine or even a Google to get what they want, to find what they want. So uh, if, if there are specific research areas which faculty members are actually involved and they bring in a lot of knowledge out of the research that they do, which they share in the classroom, then teaching learning can become really important and can become much more uh, celebrated by the students, which otherwise they don't easily get when they Google, right? So uh, it is a transformation that's happening today, according to me, not only in the university that we are in, but also across the globe, with many people trying to find out how things are going to be in the near future and possibly in next a couple of years, and what kind of policy changes that have to be brought in, with especially generative AI becoming something which is pervasive and being accessible free, because it's there for everyone to use. You don't need any specific uh, money to be put in to get access. Like you go on Google, if you got internet, that's it, you go and get what you want through a generative AI system. Uh, chat GPT is what being uh, is being spoken about, but there are so many others as well, which students access and faculty member access. So all of them are important, but yes, tech is where we'll have to go and look at and the policies for that to be used in a productive fashion, both for faculty members and students becomes one of the most important aspect in the near future that we'll have to focus on. That's what is my view answering to that question. Right, right. So this also sort of brings us to this idea of the university of future then as we look forward, right? And we've had several uh, questions, several sort of opinions that have come up from uh, the deans of several of our institutes here at SIU. And the one thing, one crucial sort of uh, topics that comes up again and again, which is this question, what are the sort of defining elements of the university of tomorrow? And since and I am a faculty and a lot of our faculty uh, are very interested in understanding uh, what are some essential skills faculty should acquire to flourish in this university of tomorrow. Okay. So if you look at university of tomorrow, it has been a sea change, especially after post COVID era, I, I would call it pre COVID, COVID and post COVID. When it was COVID, people told that, hey, look, universities of the future might not exist. And that's what people are telling right now, that universities of the future will not exist because everyone will find what they want, they can get it online. That is one part of the story. Right. Where there are others who are telling that, no, it will coexist. You'll have online stuff. 
which is available, online degrees that are available, but still you will have students who will continue to go to the university because mm -hmm. they cannot get everything that they want from an online system. I am a believer that both of them will coexist. You will have a lot of people who look out for credentials and knowledge online where they do not have time and energy and money to be spent to attend a classical university system. But there will be a lot of them who will still have the time effort and also the energy and the money to ensure that they go with the regular university system to acquire knowledge and also credentials that they need. Right. The universities of the future will not just go and impart knowledge, there will be hubs to go and create networks, real networks because how many ever times you are going to have things online that happen still a face to face interaction makes a lot of difference than just going and having a connection online or a network online. So, the universities of the future will ensure that they help in creating this real networks which will become the net worth for many students who join these universities. Mm -hmm. Universities of the future will have to be flexible and adaptable because they have to ensure that all that that is given online is available offline and it is much more than what availability online is. Like for example, if I am a student who is enrolling in a university of the future, on demand exam should become a reality. I need an exam. I ask for an exam and I take an exam which can happen today in a classic uh, a system where you are going to give a PMP examination online. Mm -hmm. You can go and give it at your convenience at the place of your choice at a pro metric center. Similar to that can that be mimicked that I am getting into a university, I demand for an exam, I have the requisite knowledge, I give the exam. Mm -hmm. Possibility should be there. This is university of the future. Similarly, I need to go ahead and take some credits online, partly offline, partly blended the university should be able to go and give it. So, we are talking more about you know being flexible, being adaptable that is the university of the future. So, when you are going to have a university of the future which is going to embed all aspects that is possible on an online system with much more benefits that an offline system can give that is the university of the future according to me. The next aspect is the multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary aspects which have to get weaved into like you talk about a flexible curriculum or a cafeteria based approach where we can pick subjects and create the kind of uh, subjects that I choose and I create my set of bouquet of subjects which is not fully possible today but partially possible that is again university of the future for me which is not fully available in any of the Indian systems that we talk today and the governance mechanism for that also has to change for a university system to accept it and adopt. If the policy regulations that is there which can if it can help do that that is again according to me university of the future. The next one is the personalized learning paths. The mm. personalized learning path for a student is something which the learning path he or she can possibly go and it should be flexible as well. Mm -hmm. No rigid system that is there which is again a technology intervention needed which actually helps them choose based on their abilities and the past performance give them a path which they can choose and they can be successful as well that is again university of a future. For all this to happen one thing as a faculty member is a flexible mindset that is needed instead of having a rigid mindset no this is the way it should be this is the way things have to happen which many a time I see the, uh, this happens for people who have spent a lot time lot of time in the uh, systems of the past. They are very much rigid to go and accept the flexible systems and say how can that happen? This is not a permitted because that is not the way it used to be. So, this is something which faculty members should definitely adopt and ensure uh, that they bring in flexibility in the way they think and they implement things. The next is be becoming tech savvy. There is no more excuse that could be given telling that I am not comfortable with technology. Technology is not my cup of tea should not be an excuse for people to go ahead and not use technology. So many tools are coming up today which can make teaching learning fun, gamification of education, gamification of examination. These are stuff which is happening today which is going to be in stay tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. if you talk about university of tomorrow then the faculty members should necessarily go and learn, unlearn, relearn, keep learning. Last university of the tomorrow should enable lifelong learning. Gone are the days when you say I have learnt it, I have gone into the industry, there is industry academia gap, I keep learning something else to survive in the industry and university does not really give me that. That should not happen. Some countries are taking progressive steps towards it. Let us take for example, Singapore as a country has told that those who have crossed 40 must necessarily go and we will give, we will support, we will give the needed resources that is needed if you want to go back to the university system and reskill yourself. 
that is something which is the government should also adopt and think. We as a country, we have got complex challenges in implementing such ideas. But at least take steps to ensure that we are in the direction which can help people unlearn and relearn and reskill. Right. So that is again university of the future, which is constantly changing. You have to be adaptable. You have to be flexible. You have to be resilient to ensure that these changes are really effective in ensuring the teaching learning process becomes better. And that brings me to uh, something that I've been thinking about in terms of the kind of leadership that is needed to shepherd us as faculty members, as students, as the institution towards the larger changes that are not only part of the larger society, but also part of the larger uh, higher education institution ecosystem. With that in mind, and again uh, coming back to the idea of beginning this new journey, um, the next question I would like to ask here is, what is an effective leadership style for vice chancellor of a globally aspiring university? And what advice will you give to the internal stakeholders uh, to achieve this aspiration? See, one size doesn't fit all. Right. One style of leadership which possibly I have in mind might not fit all universities. The reason for that is the leadership style that a university would require largely depends on the culture of the university, the, the ethos and principles on which the university has been built, the country in which it operates. Several aspects come into play when you talk about which leadership style will mm -hmm. possibly work for the university of the mm -hmm. future. I will give my views based on my experience. One the person should be a visionary, is able to look and be resilient and adaptable to bring in changes. A leader is one who is able to see what the team members are not able to see today, but it's coming on its way for things to go and possibly bring in a sea change. That's what a leader should possibly keep thinking, is about the continuous improvement. What is that I am able to bring in as an improvement for things, all processes that are there, so that the university is able to face the future, which is not really certain today. Second aspect is inclusive and empowering. When you are able to bring a lot of inclusiveness and empower people for the university that I am currently in charge, I think that will bring a lot of change and the change which is positive can really happen well. If it is not empowering and inclusive, then there will be a derailment in terms of getting things happen fast. That, people might get frustrated telling that, why is it not happening so fast as I expect it to be, right? Since we are a large university, we have got 40 plus constituents that are there. There are in one faculty, there are 16 B schools, for example, faculty of management. You've got so many leaders who are in charge of that particular institution. They should be uh, empowered. And that's what my continuous endeavor is. Empowering them to ensure that they take decisions and they move fast. When they move fast, the university moves fast. I look at it as they are the people who are the front runners and the university and the system is the back end, which is going to support the front runners to do things well, right? So the leadership should ensure that the front runners are running really fast and are adapting themselves for the future events that are going to happen. Each one is headed by a person, is a leader, right? right? right. So the university should empower, be flexible to ensure that here is the vision, and let us, as I already I have done that in my first email that I have sent, telling this is the vision that I have for the university. Let us join together and run this race, right? So that is something which has to be done. Next is excellent and constant communication. If the communication is not consistent and constant that happens, there will be always a chaos that can happen. That is again something which is needed for a leader to constantly communicate clearly what is expected and consistently do that so that we are all running towards the same goal. Mm -hmm. That is again needed according to me. For example, if you don't do that, then there might be issues that might come up where you are not really clear of what has to happen. Clear, consistent communication that we are towards this goal and we'll do everything that is needed to achieve this goal. So these are some aspects, if you ask me, from uh, a leadership uh, that is needed for a university of our kind for us to go and reach the goal that we have set, which is an audacious target, I would say, an audacious goal. It's not easy to go and achieve it in a year or two. It's a long run marathon throughout which we are going. Absolutely. And, and 
this this also brings me to the next point that I was thinking about, which is when you're talking about roadmaps and visions, there is bound to be challenges as well, right? Whenever we are thinking about the evolution, not just of a person, but of an institution, there needs to be challenges. And this brings me thinking about 2024, right? What are the major challenges that we as an institution, as well as a as an important, as a crucial member of the larger Indian HEI ecosystem should be uh, looking forward to and need to tackle immediately. So we are adopting NEP. Right. NEP is a new thing that is happening now and you got one year into it. Right. The undergraduate programs have all become four year as per the NEP. So we are going to have a lot of new challenges that comes up because we are going to adopt it and see how we are going to go through that journey. Although the rules, regulations are all set, we have told this is how it is going to happen. You're going to have multiple entry, multiple exits. How is it going to be in reality is what we're going to see. I don't see it as a challenge, but I'm going to see it as one of the opportunity to see how we're going to implement this NEP framework that you have done it for our undergraduate program. Right. Next 2024 will be the university which will be rolling out a generative AI policy. I do not know how many universities have rolled out this policy at the university level. We are already uh, done with our draft, which is now gone for recommendations to the deans. Mm -hmm. And we will now have possibly in a month or two, we'll ro roll out the generative AI policy for the university. Mm -hmm. That is something big. It's a challenge again, because we are going to have some assumptions. We're going to see how it's going to, uh, how it's going to impact our teaching learning process. And we're going to put things in place and say, this is our policy with respect to generative AI, as far as teaching learning is concerned. Uh, that is something which is in the near future. Why I don't call it a challenge, but I'm, I'm expecting certain things to happen in certain fashion. Hope it happens in that fashion. If not, I'll have to take corrective measures for it. The next big thing that we're going to have into 2024 is our Dubai campus. Mm. A, a lot of universities out there have gone to Dubai as an entity. Then what big thing? How is Symbios is different is the next question that comes up. We are the only entity which are, who is entering the Dubai market uh, as a non-profit entity. So there are some, uh, I mean, first time as far as a trust investing its money outside. A lot of policy approvals, policies changes, approvals from the government, which all have happened and right. will be possibly the one and only Indian institution to go in UAE with a CAA approval, right. which is wow. again something big. I would say that is something which is yet to cross in 2024 and our first academic operations will start in Dubai in 2024. Mm -hmm. That is something which we'll have to see how it's going to happen. So these are the immediate uh, things as far as challenges you say. I don't call it exactly challenges. Mm -hmm. But yes, there are some things which we anticipated goes in certain fashion. We'll have to wait and watch if it's going to happen in that fashion or is something else going to happen and what are the corrective measures that we are going to take. And apart from this, there are so many other policy level changes which, which, are, which we are taking as far as teaching, learning and evaluation is concerned. Number of evaluations for a credit is changing 2024 academic year onwards. And we'll have to see how the teachers and students are going to respond. We used to have different kinds of metrics when it comes to the number of evaluations for an undergraduate level program and a postgraduate level program. That's going to change from the academic year 2024. Mm -hmm. We're going to see how the students and faculty members are going to go and react to this change with lesser number of evaluations, but more impactful for, 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 for them, for us to understand that is the teaching learning happening and are they really understanding what they have to. Lesser importance to cramming and more importance to application is again what we are focusing on. We already have a set of credits which is given to experiential learning. That has happened in the past. We are trying to make it much more effective when it comes to evaluating the experiential learning part. Right. So, so it's safe to say that there's a lot of strategization, a lot of thinking that is involved in every minute daily changes, right? So this brings me, I think, to the most important question of, the, of it all. How are you tackling changes? What uh, these challenges, these the this, the stress of the daily strategy? What are your web series that you're watching? Uh, what is the music that you're listening to while you're uh, making these changes on paper? Okay. See, you call it stress provided you are really not happy with what's happening. Okay. I love my job. Right. Okay. I love what I do. So I don't look at it as stress at all. Hmm. What becomes uh, enjoyment for me is possibly looked as stress for someone else. I enjoy what I do. So if you look at the Ikigai, you know, you've got a passion. I've taken this out of passion and not out of force. Right. Being a computer science engineer, graduating when there was Y2K as an opportunity, mm. taking a conscious decision of getting into academics, mm. when people were mocking, telling that what you're doing is wrong because you're a computer science engineer, here is an opportunity. 
I have taken it out of love, out of passion. So this is not stressful for me. I enjoy what I do. Right. I always look out for challenges when 10 people say, look, this is not possible. I always feel that, let me take it and see why is it not possible. That's the way I am. So that being the case, this is not as such stress for me. I love it. So I don't know what that part of stress that you're talking about. Mm. But yes, I also enjoy Carnatic music. That's something which is very close. I love fusion uh, of the Carnatic music and uh, the current, what do you say, the Western part of it, which gets fused into Carnatic. There are a few of them who do this, of fusing Carnatic with the Western and creating something which is unique. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, when I'm going to enjoy my time, it's about listening to this music, be it musical, mm -hmm. or if, uh, if when it comes to vocal singing, yeah, that's something which I love to listen. And that's what I go ahead and uh, spend my, that gap time when I have to get rejuvenated to ensure that I perform better, that's as far as this. Uh, next, web series. I'm really not into uh, so much of looking at web series and serials. And uh, sometimes if I want to, I don't take it like I see it one by one. Mm. If it is a Sunday, I start about say 3.34, close it by 10, 11, so that I completely look at what it is and close. Okay. That's how I look at uh, web series because it's all, all there, right? One, two, three, four, right. five, six, seven, eight ep episodes right. and watch one after another and close it. So binge so watching in, through Yeah, through. That, that's how I do this web series watching. One or two of them I have watched. The Harshad Mehta series was one which was really good. I enjoyed mm. watching it. It was mm. uh, really good the way they have taken it. Yeah. A couple of them which uh, I watch also are related to the vernacular languages which are there. So not many in my playlist if you ask me. But yes, as far as listening to music, a lot of them as I told you in the play playlist, beat the Pancharatna Kritis which is completely Carnatic. I love listening to them. Mm. So that is something which is uh, my real time pass. The other ones, of course, I have got a very set close friends with whom I go and chat. Mm. With I go and uh, give my the real other part of what I am, which others don't get to see, is of course my uh, friends during my college time with whom I interact and then have my that uh, free time. I would say sometimes that comes up. That's how I spend my time. That's fantastic, fantastic. So thank you so much. Uh, I think it was a great uh, discussion that we had. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, thank you so much for telling us about the future plan, the future way ahead, and of course, about the university of future. Uh, that's all we have today uh, in this episode. We'd like to thank Dr. Raman for joining us. Uh, we'll be back with yet another episode with yet another Samvad. Till this time, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Quality Management and Benchmarking presents Samvad QMB. Thank you for your time and see you in the next episode.